And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be poured. When you come back, you can become a prophet. The writings of scriptures. One of the greatest assets that God gives a generation is spiritual hunger. When a people are endowed and blessed with hunger, they are indeed blessed. But again, it's important to learn how to manage and to bring correct administration to that spiritual resource. This is why teaching is very important. I began yesterday by laying two foundations. The first foundation is the place of the ministry of intercession. And then the second thing I established were the dimensions of that ministry. So as you give yourself to intercession, you will know when you are actually growing. You don't grow in prayer because your time of prayer becomes longer. You can achieve that by discipline. And it doesn't mean you are growing in the spirit. You don't grow in prayer because you are part of a fellowship and you are consistent. You don't grow in prayer because you are excited when people pray. If we don't understand this, we will not maximize the things that are freely given to us by God. We will become sensual and emotional about spiritual things. Spirits are not moved because you are emotional. Your euphoria does not strike a chord in the realm of the spirit. Your excitement in itself is not potent except as there is a supply of the spirit. The supply of the spirit is what makes the difference. And when a man begins to grow, the measure of the spirit that he carries increases as he grows in God. This is why it's important for us to understand these things. And I was, I was outlining them yesterday very casually. But if we don't grow on these cadres, we will not have the stature to change things in our world. And the reason we are here is because God is depending on us to make this realm become an expression of His invincible kingdom. We are not here for the formality of it. The first time God placed the man here, He says to dress the garden and to keep it. The idea was for earth to become a mirror image of heaven. In Genesis chapter 2 from verse 5, God had already decreed in Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 that the green plant should appear, the tree should grow, and every tree should bear fruit after its kind. But no tree appeared. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 5, the Bible told us why. He said the reason why no tree appeared was because God had not put the man on the earth to till the ground. So everything God has in the spirit, everything God wants to see in the visible realm is the responsibility of man to bring to pass. So every spiritual assignment we begin to carry out, our first point of reference is not how we feel about it. It's the results they produce and the extent to which these results are consistent with the will of God. If our prayers only excite us, if our prayers is only about time, if our prayers is only about the euphoria, and we don't find out to what degree they produce the will of God in our lives and in our world, we are joking. This is why as beautiful as it is to pray and to pray long, as beautiful as it is to be excited about praying, most importantly is to know whether we are growing on this corridor and if we are growing what can we achieve after time for example if you are an intercessor today and you went home and your brother or your sister god forbid or somebody close to you fell down and began to gasp for air can you draw and rely on your prayer to bring intervention i know you've been praying for months but just in case your mother or a brother or a dear person 
falls down and begins to choke for air, what will be your first resort? Will you reach back to your tongues? Or you start looking for the next man of God to call? That means you don't know what you are doing. If you believe in the power and the efficacy of your tongue, when something goes wrong, you are not looking for another man. You are drawing back to the spiritual resource that you have developed. But you will only have confidence in what you have developed if you understand the efficacy of prayer and if you are truly growing on the corridor of prayer. So your response to circumstances will not be the same all the time. Maybe three years ago, if there is a challenge, you are calling a man of God. But if after three years you are still calling a man of God, something is wrong. That means the prayer meeting has not impacted you. But this will only happen if you understand the corridor of growth as far as praying is concerned. And if you begin to check yourself on that corridor, you will know when you have moved. And then you will know what you will dare because you have moved. No, we dare things when we know that we have moved. When a man knows that he has moved in the spirit, he deliberately dare things. See, there are certain things you don't try in a meeting. But when you receive an impartation or when you have moved, you can come for that meeting and try. When I went for Randy Clark's meeting and Randy Clark imparted me, he said, walk in the glory. I now came back and I didn't bother doing impartation. I will take my time. When I'm done teaching, I will now say, off the keyboard. Hi, this thing is noisy. Off it, off it, off it. When they off the keyboard and everywhere is calm, I will now say, Holy Spirit, move now. As the Holy Ghost touch. And the same things that I used to do under high intensity, I saw that those things began to happen. I moved further. And then I walked to somebody and said, look into my eyes. And then the person will look and the person will be slain. My brother... <laughs> I began to demonstrate things. When you move, the results will bear testimony that you have migrated. That is what you do when you pray. When you pray, be deliberate. Study your growth pattern. Don't just be excited in the prayer meeting and say, Ah, yesterday we cancelled seven hours. The day before yesterday we cancelled. My sister, watch what is happening within. And I took time yesterday to show you five levels you enter into when you begin to this order and I called it the order of the keepers keepers because we are preservers of the heritages of God keepers because we secure dimensions of the spirit keepers because we are the ones that facilitate and fast track everything God wants to do in time God will not appear from heaven to have an assignment done on earth if anything wants in this world is men that run the errand for God. That it is happening and you think it's just happening is a joke. Everything that happened, that you see happening in this world, somebody bore the body. A revival can begin and you say, hey, revival has come. And then you see many apostolic centers opening, many churches opening. You are just benefiting from what somebody has produced. When you go back into the spirit, you will discover that the reigning apostle is not the most ranking apostle. Because the reigning apostle entered into the harvest. The man who is more ranking is the one that labored to bet it. You can find peace in this territory today. And because there is peace, you are having create, you become creative about business. You are thinking of the business to do in the night. You are thinking of the business to do in the daytime. And you have become a millionaire. You are actually not so important to God. Because that peace came at a price. Somebody paid the price for that peace. That person who paid the price for that peace is more relevant in the spirit realm. This is why we should not be carried away by activities. We should find out how things are done. The Bible said the children of Israel knew the acts of God. So they know when word of knowledge is accurate. They know when word of knowledge is from God. They know when healing has taken place. But they said Moses knew the ways of God. So Moses did not just know what God is doing. Moses knew how to get what God wants to be done. Done. If we begin to develop ourselves in the corridor of prayer, this is the direction we will go. This is the direction we will go. And I told you, there are five functionaries in this part. The first functionaries are intercessors. 
And I said intercessors are not just men of prayer. No. Intercessors have done business in the corridor of prayer. And they have graduated to a place in that corridor. When you begin to pray, you discover that you begin to journey in the spirit. Prayer is actually a movement in the spirit. Prayer is a migration in the spirit. It's not talking. When you pray for a while, for when you start practicing this thing and the prayer energy actually comes on you, you will notice that sometimes you are praying in your room. And after a while, when that energy overtakes you, the next time you open your eyes, maybe you are facing the wall somewhere. You were thinking in your head that you were still standing by your bed. When you opened your eye, you were at the door somewhere. Or you were facing the window. Sometimes you even hit, you hit something and then you come. Because you travel so much that you become unconscious of the natural environment. As you carry out this journey, a point comes where you reach a destination in the spirit. And I said that destination is the destination of bodies. So an intercessor is somebody who has traveled on the altar and have arrived where bodies dwell. So what that person does is that he articulates what's in the heart of the father. So whatever the father wants to do, whatever troubles the father, is natural for that person to discern it. You should be troubled that something happened in this city you are not aware. It means you are still part of those who are doing the kindergarten. You are still learning prayer. You have not started praying. Because those who can articulate the body in the heart of God, when something wants to happen, God tells them. He said, will I do a thing without informing my servant? That's God questioning himself. Is he correct? Because this guy, through intimacy, he has come to a point where it's unlawful for God to carry out an action without telling him. That's where we journey to in prayer. So you are growing in prayer when you come to a place where God consults with you to do things. Things don't happen and you are aware when they happen. You know things will happen because God is depending on you to change it. Somebody called me from Otupo yesterday and said there was fire outbreak in the market. And he said this thing has been consistent. We should pray about it. I said something is wrong. If you are in that land and you see intercessor and this thing is happening and you are hearing it on the news when everybody is hearing it something is wrong because before that fire outbreak happened in the demonic coven they knew those in the demonic coven knew and some of them orchestrated that fire how come you who is also supposed to be participating in that realm you are not aware it's the aftermath you are only aware of these are the things that trouble us when we begin to pray that something go wrong, I didn't know until it happened. And I say, I am in that territory. Something is wrong. Because when that thing wanted to go wrong, it troubled God. Why? His children will be affected. It troubled God. Why? Because the peace and the decorum will be affected. It troubled God. Why? Because it will affect the purposes of God. So the moment God knew that was the plan of the devil, he began to look for somebody to stop it. How come you are not the one that picked that body? Because God wanted to stop that thing and he was looking for a man to stop it. The reason is because everything God wants to do is a man that will carry it out. How come you were not the man that God found? How come you didn't know this was what wanted to happen? And because he troubled the father, you came and you passed the legislation and said it will not happen again. How come you are not aware? If these things become your body, when you come to pray, you will be more conscious about migration. Because you will know that at every time God has a body, your job will be to articulate it. That's who an intercessor is. An intercessor is not a man that knows the laws of prayer. An intercessor is not a man that just prays. An intercessor is a man that keeps sync with the Holy Spirit. So he knows what God is planning. He knows what God wants to do. And what God wants to do is what powers him. So why you come for your prayer meeting and you are done with your prayer and you are going home and intercessor is just starting. The reason is because his prayer time is not judged by the hours allocated. His prayer time is, uh, is judged by when the body lifts. So an intercessor can stay on one prayer point for three months. He's not praying to keep time. He's not praying to keep a schedule. He's praying according to bodies. 
And sometimes I said, that body can keep him down for one year. That's why it looks as if their life is not fast. Because they travel with body. Meanwhile, the guy who is keeping and located, you know you can do your business from morning to night. And then you come to church. You yourself know that you actually don't have time for God. So the two hours, three hours you have in church, you want to kill yourself. You are trying to mark time. It's not necessarily because something is happening. You are just trying to play your part because you know you will not be around for a long time. I told us yesterday, I said, honor, honor, the economy of honor in the kingdom is invested in service. A man cannot know the honor of a spirit unless he enters actively into the service of that spirit. And you don't serve a spirit by doing what you think is right. A spirit has an economy that powers its service. So it's not what you do that matters to that spirit. It's by what means you do what you do. When you carry out a function for a spirit, you can even be praying and the spirit comes and says it's not aware. Because the energy with which you are praying is your will. So while you are praying, if some people enter the auditorium, your prayer intensity becomes louder. Because the people need to know that, oh boy, you'll be man of prayer. So when the meeting finishes, they come and say, oh boy. Oh boy. So that, those are earthly fuels. It will move that spirit. You can be praying to claim, to make a point. That in this place, you are the one that inherited the prayer mantle. <laughs> a spirit will come. You have prayed loud and long, but he didn't notice you. Your voice didn't appear in Zion. You didn't pass through the radar. Because what first spiritual operation is the Holy Ghost himself. And until a spirit begins to power what you do, you have not started. That's why when you pray, your focus is not time. When you pray, your focus is how to come into that crucible of intimacy where you can begin to mingle with the Holy Ghost and you take of Him and you live by Him. So that God begins to will and to do of His good pleasure through you. It's the way of the intercessor. You have not become an intercessor until you can articulate the importance in the heart of God. See, spiritual things are hard. Make no mistakes about it. They are hard. I knew that I was a joker. See, when they want to organize program, they call me to come and make people laugh. I was an orator. I was a clown. Make people laugh. When you talk, they say, hey, hey, hey. Oh. <sighs> One day, the Holy Ghost came and told me, so this is all you can do. A, a veil opened. And I went straight for 40 days fasting and prayer. I locked myself. I didn't come out to talk to anybody. Don't worry. 40 days. I was there laboring in prayer. It was on the 21st day the Holy Ghost came. And that time the Holy Ghost came, that was when my activity began. So sometimes the prayer we pray here is actually is a launching pad. You will be shocked that we may be 50 praying here intercessors will be one. Or two. When you finish praying the prayer point and you reach the end of the prayer, and you say, ah, thank God he don't finish today. <laughs> you are praying, you are tired. When an intercessor is praying, he's charging. The difference is that you are spending physical energy. The intercessor is living by the fuel of a body. So, he... I wish you can understand what I'm sharing. There are certain assignments you begin to do. Because you are trying to trap a body, God will place laws. There are times when you begin some kind of prayer, God will tell you, don't touch your phone for two weeks. You know what he said? You are trying to trap a body. So the first day you touched it with your right hand, you felt it in the prayer meeting. But before you held it, the prayer ended. So God wants your hand to remain there till the next time you come. So he will stop you from doing a lot of things. Because if you go back to those things, you will remove your hand. So you will come back again. You will repeat what you did today. And you will be shocked that sometimes the next day your hand would even go as far as it went. So some people in one month, they are trying to touch. But a man who understood or who understands the economy of body, if he prays certain prayers, he knows it's a sin to talk to somebody while he's leaving the fellowship. So why others finish prayer meeting and they are saying, How far? Hey, what did they happen? Oh boy, that clothes went one by. Ah. The guy knew that he wanted to receive something. But the thing had not downloaded. So he will go home quietly. 
and he will keep that atmosphere till the next time of prayer. He may go home and continue with the prayer. He is trying to articulate the body. Sometimes it takes two weeks to trap a body. And in those two weeks, you must be detached from mortars. You can't relate with people normal. If you relate with them normal, that pregnancy will not come in. It will be a before you are impregnated. This is the way of the spirit. And this is how we become relevant. You can go to your job, your office. You may not greet anybody. You are not being rude. You are just trying to trap something. You are trying to... You, you are, in fact, you can choose to go to work five, two hours earlier. So that you don't have to come and greet everybody. You go and hide yourself. And then you keep that atmosphere until you come back to the meeting in the evening again. And when you come back in the evening, as the prayer begins, you continue from where you stopped yesterday. Because where the body is, is at the end of the junction. And yesterday you covered five meters. So you will make sure you remain here till you start the journey again. And after two weeks you will reach there. But some people will not reach in ten years. Because they traveled five meters. Immediately they left the prayer, they went back. And tomorrow they come, they travel seven meters. They go back, they return to the beginning. And the next day, maybe they can't even travel the five meters again. But wise men understand that intercession begins when they are able to articulate bodies. So when they cover five meters in the spirit, they know what it took them to reach here. They will do everything to remain here. So that the next day, even if it's one step they take, they move forward. And they will do everything to remain there. After two weeks, they will catch that body. The moment you catch the body, you stop walking. God begins to walk through you. That's when intercession begins. When you can articulate the bodies of God and you are no longer the one walking, God is the one walking. That's what Paul meant when he said, I labor more than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God that is in me. He knows. You can't stun a man to death and the man gets up and says, let's enter the next city. Who does that? Something is at work in him that is superior to his will. And he said, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think, but it's according to the power that is at work on our inside. There is something he has come. You can't do intercession until you are impregnated with a body. That's the first promotion in the order of the keepers. But many never reach there. So when we say you are not praying, it's not, it's not a bill to make you feel less of yourself. We are teaching you how to walk in the spirit. It takes labor to walk in the spirit. You may never be relevant. I was an orator from a child. But never relevant. At best, I became a clown. Nobody takes you serious. You can do what you are doing. You will impress people. People will look at you and say, Kai, well done. God is using you. God is using you. They will keep encouraging you, but you will remain there. God is using you. Nobody will invite you. God is using you. When they have a need, they will not consult you. Your neighbor will say, Ah, man of God, sir. Man of God, sir. But he will never come to you to receive the dividends of a man of God. He is just encouraging you. The journey into body is the first assignment for the keepers. That's when God knows you are serious. God doesn't think you are serious just because you are consistent. While you are consistent praying, what other things are you consistent avoiding? Are you willing to shut down the distraction? Are you able to shut down the things that deplace what you are impregnated with. Because he said, cast not holy things to swine. It's a law in the spirit that God does not things to people that trample them. He didn't say swine because it's a pig. He said, if he gives it to you, you will trample it. So if you cannot pay the sacrifice to articulate the body, it's a waste. Because if he gives it to you, you will rubbish it. The day God invested, that's the day you may decide that you want to relocate to Lagos. Because it didn't matter to you in the first place. The journey of the keepers is the journey of intercession. 
and there are few intercessors in the body of Christ. When you see things go wrong, this is the reason. More than a million preachers, more than a million churches, yet darkness, because only few can carry the burden in the heart of God. You know how we get our messages? We come down, sit, and then we plan it from January to December. We prepare messages based on our congregation. So if your congregation are elites, you check their jobs. If they are businessmen, you know the kind of prayers to raise. It's all about secular things. A man message from Genesis from January to December. Do you know the things that are in the heart of God for the season? But it doesn't matter. Because you have to keep the people going. And the people have to keep prospering. So every anointing we have is to make people prosper in the natural. But they don't prosper in the spirit. Go to the average church today. 90% of the congregation cannot pray for one hour. And the pastor has a big church. Prosper in the natural, but they never prosper in the spirit. When God came to Gideon, he wanted to raise an army. Out of 32,000 people, only 300 were ready. Because they are not taught. The person can take time to manage his or her skin. He can take time to manage his or her boutique. He can take time to manage everything in the natural manage the texture of the soul to be able to host the bodies of God. So when God wants to do something, He looks for men. The Bible said the eyes of God move to and through the earth. If we invoke Samuel and Moses, their prayer will not serve. That means sometimes a people can lack intercessor so much that is the covenant that God has with their fathers that God Because no man can stand. That is the scarcity of men in the spirit. And then you think when we go to heaven. Or in the next world. We will sit on the same thrones. We are not the same. What do you do with the grace of God? What do you do with the ability of the spirit that is on your inside? It's the journey of relevance in the kingdom. Intercessors are lucky. And the reason is because the gospel that was taught in the last 40 years have enthroned self and selfishness. So not many can even as much as feel the pains of their neighbors, even in the natural. They say somebody dies, say, yeah. <laughs> they are crying in your neighbor's eyes. Say, "Kai, this person don't die now. May we rest." You are traveling. You see somebody else's car bashed. You say, "If you join into the heart of God and you know the things troubling him, you'll be amazed." Everything going wrong in this city is a burden in the heart of God. But God has not been able to put anyone on your shoulder because you don't know the economy of prayer. When you begin to travel in prayer, you'll be shocked that all of a sudden the lamentations of the people will become a burden. All of a sudden, the marginalization will become a burden. All of a sudden, many things will become a burden. It's even so pathetic that most times the things that trouble society is men in the secular world that takes it on their head. Why do you think you have many activists all around? Because their natural, their fleshly emotion at least makes them know that this thing is not right. So they become activists to fight against it. Without the help of a spirit. Meanwhile, we are praying here. We say we, we just incite and ex excite ourselves. What if you go to heaven today and God told you the reason I kept you in Abba is because I raised you as one of the people that we bet the boroughs in this land. Because I knew that in your day and time how lottery will become the order of the day so I sent you. What would you say if you realize you were sent 
to this generation and this territory. That something God planted on your inside was to change the government. He said there is a man sent from God whose name was John. There are certain people that are sent to a people. But if you don't provoke that river, you will never journey far enough. Christianity is not a cliche. It's a life in the spirit. We can't overemphasize this. I wish you hear this thing every day for one month. So that you'll be awoken to your dimension. Sometimes you go out and you discover you just pray for the sick, they are healed. And the plague of sickness in this land is a body in the heart of God. And God has raised you to attend to it. Sometimes you go to a family, they say people are dying. And you just join people, you pray and death ends. You don't know that body in the heart of God, you are the solution. Because you never paid attention. Sometimes I wonder what is the use of the invitation. Every time we come for service, sometimes you have four sessions in three days. The whole four sessions are invitation sessions. Yet nothing happens. I was sharing with Lawrence yesterday. If you bring 1,000 mad people to this city, will this city be normal? Meanwhile, the last meeting we had, they were 1,080. And we say we set them on fire. How come you set 1,000 people on fire and you can't feel the impact? If you bring 20 Boko Haram people to Abba today, the whole security operatives will be alert. Because they know danger has come. Meanwhile, we come for conference, we say, oh boy, the fire today, the impartation. And then 300 people say they are on fire. Yet nothing happened. The city is normal. Are we not making fun of ourselves? You say, Holy Ghost, 30 people fall down. They shout under the fire and the fire ends two minutes after the meeting. The same people under the fire begin to shake themselves. They are talking about a birthday party they want to attend. If 10 of you catch fire, you think this city is enough? <laughs> it's a game of emotions. We must wake up and take responsibility. If this thing doesn't trouble you, then it's a body. Because you will leave this world and discover you are not relevant to God. Because your relevance, your honor is tied to the assignment God can give you. This country called Nigeria, you'll be shocked that the person that owns this country in the spirit is not an African. patriarchs of this land were connected in one way or the other to Pahelti. Came from another country. Took upon himself the burden of this land and he raised all the patriarchs. And today we don't have one pastor that can say he has raised men that are doing something in the city of political so that is territorial. Meanwhile, a white man enters the land took so much body and showed them the apostolic pattern. You will be shocked that if you don't rise for your territory in the day of reckoning, you will be amazed that the same Abba you lived in in your own generation belonged to a boy. In because that boy labored over this land in the spirit. And God wills territories to men. Not because they come from those territories. But because they took responsibility over those territories in the spirit. You see, Epaphras is one of you. A born servant of Christ. Laboring fervently for you in prayers. That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Everything God was doing in Colossus was a function of Epaphras. That's how men take territories. If you go to pray, what is it that is in your heart? Some of us can't travel out of. 
even though we pray for three hours, four hours, it's only realities within ourselves that comes to our spirit. We are very small. While you are praying only about school fees and house rent, which are legitimate prayer points, of course. Somebody else, the moment he lifts his hand, he comes out of himself. And the next thing, he stands in the spirit and is interceding for the east. That the move of God will come. That the power of religion will shut down. That the power of lasciviousness will shut down. He is standing for the east. Meanwhile, some of us can't even come out of ourselves. We are so locked within. Who do you think God will work with best? I don't know. I can't remember when last I prayed for myself. And now that I'm not praying for myself, there are over 4,000 people praying for me. Imagine if I wasted my life praying for myself. <laughs> Today, sometimes they organize prayer for three days for me. I don't even know them. I just come and see the hand be. There is no way my prayer would have been that powerful. But because I labored for others and for territories, now God has raised a thousand voices praying for me. So it is a superior strategy of preservation in the spirit. Most of you who are only praying for yourself and your needs, you have been praying for yourself for 10 years, you are still praying for yourself. And still yet you are not yet married. Still yet you are not yet rich. You have not built your own house. Yet you have been praying for yourself for 10 years. Come out of yourself. You are too small. Because when you pray for others, when you take the burden of God, you, be, you spread. The people who can't sleep because of you, if you know them, you shout. They can't sleep. They want to bless you. They are struggling to bless you. It's when they bless you that they are happy. How much can you do for yourself? So when we begin the journey of intercession, we travel out of ourselves. And we journey into God. Find out what is in the heart of the Father. And we make it our life's body. The moment we are able to achieve that, our lives have become transgenerational. We can't end. That was what happened to Mary. When Jesus came, she left herself and entered into the heart of Christ. And she found a body in the heart of Jesus. And she emptied a, a perfume, what a year's wage on him. And when those who were in, the, in themselves complained, Jesus said, this thing she has done, she has done it for my burial. And wherever this gospel is preached, her name will be remembered as a memorial. The man who was complaining ended in that generation and ended as a son of perdition. Have you journeyed into the heart of God before? Has your Christian enterprise taken you farther than yourself before? Have you ever traveled out of yourself? Do you know what it feels like to live outside yourself? Have you carried out any enterprise as a Christian that is outside of yourself before? Have you ever journeyed into the heart of God? Has God disclosed for once to you before what is in his heart? If he has not, then you are far. Meanwhile, that's the realm many people live. God troubles them. God literally, why you, you are praying and hoping God will answer? Why you, you are laboring, trying to assess God? There are certain men that God, God literally bamboozles them, troubles them, box them. Sometimes they are tired. When God is tapping them, they say, leave me God, leave me. They, the angel touch them here. They turn it and cover their pillow. The angel will come back, touch them. If they don't feel it, after a while, the angel will bring heat. And put, put, the, put heat in the room until they can't sleep again. Then they wake up, what is this? What is this? Why you are praying to God? God is praying to others. Wake up, wake up, wake up. We have something to do. 
Meanwhile, you, you are fasting for seven days. You are hoping that God will hear you. Meanwhile, God is troubling others to hear him. It's not because he loves them more. They, they enter there by the power of alignment. They and when they went there, they discovered that God didn't have men. If you know how God is looking for men, you'll be shocked. Why do you think God came to use us? People like us, see how we look. Look at yourself for a second. You like this, God comes to tap you in the night and say, wake up. Any day God does that to you, cry, begin to cry. Because when you take a census of the land, there are over 400,000 in this city. Lord, how many people did you tap? And some nights you are the only one. Sometimes you are the only one. You mean you came to a bar and I'm the one you visited. You should be afraid. But when you become an intercessor, those visits will be normal. God was on his way to Sodom. How did he pass through Mamre? Why? Why? Why do you have to pass through Mamre? And he made sure he passed in front of Abraham. Let Abraham see him. Meanwhile, he was going to destroy Sodom. God wanted to whisper it to Abraham. The way you are, you want to gist with your friend. And if your friend have not come, your body is eating you. Maybe that day Abraham didn't appear in the court. God was hoping Abraham will come to the, to the heavens. And Abraham was busy doing other things. When they finished the court session and they didn't see Abraham, God decided to pass and whisper to Abraham. That's the level where some are operating with God. It's you that everything is breaking news on the internet. Some people are aware many times before. A story was told of how Jesus appeared to rejoin them. I think he joined them. And then Jesus told him some things. And then when Jesus finished, rejoin, I didn't understand it. What does this mean? So he went, he was going to ask Bob Jones. And when he came to Bob Jones, Bob Jones began to tell him what happened yesterday. That means when Jesus came to you, me and Jesus discussed that he should visit you. You are the one shouting, I had an encounter. Some people discuss with God. They now say, do you think you should visit that nail now? And then another man is telling God, let's give him two years. <laughs> and then sometimes I say, do you think we should tell Nele this thing? Or maybe we should leave it for one year. First you say, no. Let's just tell him now. It will help him. That's another man discussing with God. Meanwhile, you, you are happy that you had an encounter. You had an encounter. When Zachariah the high priest was being judged, another man was telling God, let's remove this fitting garment. God said, let's remove this fitting garment. Say, yes, let's remove this. Let's remove this garment. Let's. So another man is discussing your faith in heaven. That's how men become big. That's why we are in church, but we are not the same. Sometimes one person is what makes that church church. Because that one person is what brings the dimension of God. It's important. How many wants to be intercessors? Intercessors are lacking. This is not an impartation service. A base. This is a service of bodies. How come I've been praying for two years yet I can't sense God? Why? Sometimes it becomes so bad. It looks as if when these things are said, they are not true. Man of God, please celebrate God's servant and his wife, Evangelist Lawrence Sawyer. You know, the first time I met Apostle, every service Apostle is preaching, say, Kai, ah, oh, I see an angel. I say, ah, oh, this angel, is he every day they see them? <laughs> ah, is he every day they see angels? What, I know. And I went back and said, come on, this thing, is it true? 
Or they just say it. Is it true? How come? Sometimes his ministry looks up and says, Ah, the heaven just opened. I just saw Jesus. I say, Jesus, you just saw who? Are you sure it's not imagination? <laughs> are you sure? You know, if you don't do business in deep waters, when people who are there are talking, you think they are joking. Because you have been separated for too long, you think these things are just talk. But they are real. And it's more real than the natural realm. That's why a man can stand and say, something is happening here. I see a light. And then you, you check. The only light you see is the light of the sun. And it's not only there. <laughs> and after a few seconds, something begins to happen. Because he turned it into bodies. And after a while, I gathered the man's messages and I began to hear. I began to hear. And as I started hearing the messages, a strange hunger was better in my spirit. And I embarked on, a, on an eight month fasting and prayer. And I discovered that you don't only see angels, sometimes they touch you. <laughs> and I realized that these guys, they're actually more interested in relating with us than themselves. It looks as if angels don't relate with themselves much. Because sometimes you stand in a meeting, you are sensing heat here. It's heavy. One is touching your leg. One is touching your heart. Another one is troubling your eye. So you need to be quiet to find out what is happening. Because over four or five beams are touching you at the same time. And now they realize the spirit realm is not far. The spirit realm is actually superimposed with this realm. Your consciousness is what bridges the dimension. And it begins when you can travel into bodies. How far have you traveled in your prayer? Have you been able to journey out of yourself before? I know you have prayed for long, but have you for once traveled out of yourself? Have you ever traveled out of yourself? Or all you know are the things that go on within you. The last time you went out of yourself. And when was the last time you visited God and entered into the heart of the Father? When was the last time God shared with you what he wanted to do? When was the last time God shared with you his heartbeat and his heart cry? Meanwhile, that's where many live. Some of them, like I said, they, they, they don't know when last they slept smoothly. This, this sleep that you, you, you hit the bed and then you wake up by 8 a.m. Some people don't know when last they slept through the night. Because it's either an angel is troubling them or God is troubling them or something is troubling them. And that thing will stop them from sleeping. So when they go to pray, they say, Lord, please let me sleep this night. Please. Meanwhile, the reason you are able to sleep is because that man is awake. You don't even know what is happening in the east now. Most of you are not aware. That your land is about to be overrun by the wicked men from the Islamic north. Most of us don't know that this prayer we are praying now may be to preserve this land in the next 30 years. So that your children will not have to run from this land or become strangers. The man ran away. So they go to the army to be trained and to be deployed into another army. And they are mobilizing them in this direction. And you think prayer is a casual thing. You don't know the heart of God. The prophetic destiny of this land depends on how many people can catch it as a body. It's not just activities. Your governors are there collecting money and dashing lands to foreigners to build mosques and to build places of idol worship. And you think it's normal. The same land, they collect your land and ask you to buy it three times the price and if you can't buy it they collect it and tomorrow the land belongs to a malam and you think it's normal you don't know that the future of the territory is being back in and because you can't travel far in the spirit it doesn't mean anything to you every time you pray it's about bread and wine you are within yourself you have never traveled out of yourself
if you are still living for yourself, it means you are not relevant. What you, what you need for your life actually is supposed to come to you as a gift. That's why eternal life was a gift. The Holy Ghost was a gift. Faith, a gift. Everything you need for your immediate existence is a gift. Including the food you eat. But you will not enter there until your life begins to bless others. If your life begins to bless others, you will discover what you need for your existence will be a gift. What you work for is to bless others as well. That's why I say him that stole should stop and work with his hand that he will have to give. You have not imparted people enough. That's why every day you are laboring how to survive. And the first way to begin to impart people is to take responsibilities in the spirit. As we are today, when we come to pray, we are actually supposed to be ambassadors of different kingdom responsibilities. So when we congregate, what we are doing is that we are generating corporate energy so that every arm will be strengthened. Somebody is supposed to be an ambassador of the business world to push back darkness from the market. Somebody is supposed to be an ambassador of the body of Christ. Somebody is supposed to be an ambassador of the land. Somebody is supposed to be an ambassador of the security system. So our gathering becomes the ecclesia. We are keepers gather. So when we are praying, you are receiving legislation for the army. Somebody else is receiving legislation for the economy. Somebody else is receiving legislation for the family. So we will not need to go to one family and another family to pray for death, to pray for marriage. Because you came for that meeting, you are representing families. Because you are in that meeting, death will stop in a family. You came as a representative of family. That is how the kingdom is wrong. It's called the ecclesia. So our intercessory gathering is actually a place where we deploy God into every sector of human endeavor. You don't need to send a prophet to three families, go and do deliverance here, go and cast out devils here, go and get people. No. Don't we have ambassadors of families? Who are the men very important of the family? Are they no longer coming for the fellowship? You don't need to go and pray for the fire outbreak in the Onisha market. We have ambassadors that keep the gates of the market. So, so long as they come to the ecclesia, the market is preserved. But there are no body bearers. There are no body bearers. Every time we come, we come with ourselves. Me, I, and myself. That's why our meeting, if we are 30, we are 30. If we are 50, we are 50. So we count people. Meanwhile, when Ecclesia scatter, what you count are systems, not men. Because every man represents a system. In that meeting, he doesn't have a voice. He speaks as a corporate persona. So when I stand up to speak, you know this guy is representing the interest of the body of Christ. When another man stands up to speak, you know this guy is defending the business world. When somebody has stands up, it's our bodies that speak in those meetings. So when we begin to pray, it is the system that we are contending for. Because we came as candidates and recipients of bodies. This is God's strategy of delivering territories. But there are no body bearers. And the reason there are no body bearers is because we don't travel far in our prayer enterprise. You know, sometimes for you to become relevant in the prayer meeting, you need to take a 60 days retreat first. That 60 days retreat will help you detach from this world. Because the first five days, you want to go out and check your phone. But the Holy Ghost have banished the use of phone. So, after five days, that that connection that ties you to whatsapp and facebook we cut and then the next thing is hunger and then god we cut that connection and after a while bottom because you are not used to staying alone for four days and then you will struggle after 10 days god will cut that connection if you are there maybe after the 21st day then you would have been separated from this realm that's when you will enter into the assembly of the immortals and then they will welcome you and tell you well 
from the day you were born, what was real to you was actually the political corridor. But you didn't come far to receive the instruction, so they were waiting for you. Because it's on the mountain of God that we are instructed. Now that you have come, they will now tell you that for the past 30 years, the office of the, the governor have been manipulated. This is a sorcerer that determines who is a governor. So you now go and unseat the sorcerer. That's when you begin to exist. So when you show up, every time you lift your voice, you are fighting in the spirit. You are not just praying in tongues. You are actually fighting. And when you are fighting like that, the sorcerer will begin to pick the vibration. So it will become battle of energy. See all these Muslim guys you are seeing here. I'm not, you know, this is not a way to induce anybody into anything. We don't fight physically, we fight in the spirit. So this will not lead to arrogance or fight or, or tension. This will actually provoke us to prayer. Most of these guys will call shoe shiners. That's not what they are doing. Every evening they go to the mosque, they give them food. They are not sustained by what they are doing. But you turn them into your they need to go around the territory and cast spares. So all of them are little, little sorcerers. So when they walk around your, your place in the evening and in the morning, they are actually casting spares. They have the territory where they are assigned to. So the guy must go around that territory every day and chant incantation. Because what he's doing is that he is trying to, to veil the sun, to seal it with darkness. So that you will become blinded. You will not notice what they are doing. And you will remain until you will hear that. Aban not. Only they. Only live there. You will not know. Then you hear that. It's now answer for us. And after a while they say they want an emir. <laughs> you, when did all these things happen? Because they made you sleep. That's how they take kingdoms. So you are not relevant to the prayer meeting until you have also been allocated the territory. You have been allocated an assignment. Else you will come here and impress people. Why do you think when we pray we are conscious of who is napping? <laughs> we are playing. <laughs> we are playing. When you have body, who told you you will know what's going on? When they are shouting the name of you can't even hear. You will not notice because you have left the hall. <laughs> Lawrence was, was best two days ago. Get out of this building! They didn't understand what you were saying. They said, pray you are in the building. What are you doing here, sir? We have left this place. Why are you still here? Because you don't have a body. You see somebody praying. He's doing like this. When you are there. 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 <laughs> Sometimes they pray. They do like this. When you are there. Then they carry their phone. How did you know? You still remember you came with phone. That's where you are actually. You are with your phone. <laughs> and then when they now sing a song that he likes. Hey! For five minutes. Oh, oh, oh. Guys, he comes down with the song. <laughs> That's why we learn new songs every day. So we sing them in progression to keep the people in activity. If you have a body, even when you are in the bus, that body will trouble you. Because your prayer didn't start in the prayer meeting. You are a prayer. The way a footballer is a footballer, you are a prayer. You are not praying again. You have become prayer. But I tell you the truth. Few of us that have traveled that far. Why do you think? Look at the fathers. They have one message for 40 years. That to tell you is not a message. That's their body. Somebody preaches one message for 40 years. One. Billy Graham. More than 60 years of ministry. Jesus loves you. You don't have to die a sinner. Come. And he's talking the cross. The cross for 60 years. That man can't sleep. 
every day he's thinking about lost souls because when he entered there that was what they impregnated him with. even the week and the Hagen died he was organizing the faith conference his heart cries for people to be able to believe God and to know that walking with God is real and the point came he was living a fasted life we will function with what is trending because we don't have a place in the spirit so when a new preacher is coming everybody comes they are looking for what he will do and receive impartation or touch him or touch him how many times have you touched God a man comes you go and time when the protocol are not watching you run you grab his leg you think you have entered something because you know you will run for two minutes and catch him Go and pursue God like that. God has been waiting in your bedroom for three years. The same energy you used to hold the leg of a preacher. Why not use that energy to chase God? Religiosity. As if I touch it. Something, oof, something have rested on me. Is that how the thing rested on him? We deceive ourselves. This is a hard cry. The worst thing that will happen to you is not to go to hell. If you go to hell, you will know you deserve it. The worst thing that will happen to you is to go to heaven and discover your assignment was supposed to make you sit on a throne, yet you will be in outer darkness. You will go to heaven and God will tell you, in your generation, there were five of you. And you are the only one I put in Africa. That means before you left Africa, the impact of your life will resonate in Africa. God may even tell you, though you were born in Africa, I sent you to Europe. But you never made impact. And then they will show you, this was supposed to be your throne. You were supposed to sit next to Apostle Paul. Because you are the second in succession. You are the second. What Apostle Paul did lasted for 100 years. I needed another person after 100 years to continue. But unfortunately, when the angels came to your room, they were troubling you, you didn't respond. You now remember that six months where every day you came home, you wanted to pray. But that was when your friend came and said, have you watched prison break? <laughs> and when you finished prison break, they said, did you see Kyle XY? When you finish Kyle X1, they say criminal minds. And then you diffuse that energy watching season. And then as you finish criminal mind, you now enter Big Brother Niger. And through Big Brother Niger, you became demonized. And you found the boyfriend. And immorality ended your destiny. When you are there. When you are there. When you are there. When you are there. You don't have to look it to be it. I took time to study people. If you look at Captain Kuman, she had no credential of a minister in the natural. But you can never talk about the healing ministry in this world without Captain Kuman. Never look like it. Ami Sempe McFassi married two husbands. That means she was supposed to be disqualified. But there was an energy that she would not let go. And finally, when she latched to that energy, she will run to a street and just stand. And when people gather, she will run into an auditorium. They will follow her. And when they enter, she begins to preach. You can't move. There was something about her walls that pierces the heart of men. She had entered body. It was said of Alexander Dowie. He went to the hospital. A brother was hospitalized. And when he strode to the back, he heard the doctors. They were confused. And the doctors will come out and compose themselves and say, no, you will be fine. He now realized that medicine was his calm. Even when the doctor is confused, he just gives you hope. And the doctor doesn't know what will be your next. So they are managing you to die. He went back and he caught a body. And he said, no sick person will die around him. I heard about E.W. Kenyon. In his bathroom, a Bible is open.
In his parlor, a Bible is open. In his bedroom, every room in his house had a scripture that was open. The scripture is always open. He must look at a verse every time of his life. And a point came, the Bible said, we were told that nobody died in his church less than 80 years. If you die, he will wake you up. You can't die. If you die, he will wake you up. Somebody went to his church, a healing evangelist. And after the guy preached, the guy prayed for the sick. He said, if you are healed, lift your hand. Nobody. The guy said, he was surprised. Has something gone wrong with me? He said, nothing has gone wrong with you. We don't have sick people here. Sick people don't come here. We only called you to bless us. The technology of body. When Manuel's wife became pregnant for something, he said, don't drink any strong wine. There's a protocol that preserves it. When you enter, it must be kept. It must be kept. There are some of you here. For you to fulfill destiny, there are many friends you must cut off from. Because every time you meet them, they dissipate your energy. There are some of you here. There are certain you have to off your phone. Some people don't have any business with the phone. Because for two weeks, nobody has caught them. Neither have they caught anybody. They are just on Facebook and WhatsApp. Your phone is your grave. A grave is not always six feet deep. Sometimes your grave can be in your hand. You can carry your grave all your life. And you will think the day you stop breathing is the day you die. No. The day you handled that phone was the day you died. You were buried in that phone. How I wish God opens your eyes to see what he planted. He said he planted eternity in your heart. I wish you know what you are capable of that have been dormant in your life. How I wish the Holy Ghost can open your eyes this morning to realize that Abba has no future unless you rise. Enough of coming to church every day for religious sake. Don't come here to take attendance. God is not interested in that. When you leave, what do you carry? What do you carry to your world? Do you know what it takes for God to invest something in your heart? For salvation to be invested in your heart, God had to become man. Hung on a cross naked and died. Every time a spiritual substance is downloaded to your heart, death was in view. Something happened in the divine side. That thing you caught fire that you have wasted three times already in your life, you don't know by what means you caught it. Sometimes it took an evangelist ten years of fasting and prayer to be able to deposit fire in your heart. And the reason God put that fire in your heart is because God wants to carry it for another ten years. But you wasted it. Because we don't know what spiritual things are about. Life will have no meaning unless men learn the art. Of journeying in God. Who told you your name is Moses and that's all there is about you? Who told you it's all about a former? Who told you? If we want to know you, we must find out the dimension that was captured in your vessel. And that dimension is your name. Every man will be named after his dimension. The true name of Zion is the dimension of Christ that you caught and gave expression to. That's why when we go to heaven, He will give us a new name. That name is after the order of your assignment on earth. Some will be watchers. Some will be judges. Some will be guardians. Some will be custodians. How many spiritual things have you wasted? And see how young all of us are. And then you hear a young man say, Those days when I was on fire, those days, you are already dead. You are already dead. You are just not aware. You are not aware. You are already dead. Jesus said, What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? What it means is that if your business threatens your work with God, stop that business. It's a radical statement. It is a radical statement. Anything that stops or threatens your work with God, stop it. That's 
that's what he was saying. He said, what can a man give in exchange of his soul? When God manipulates the cosmos, manipulates men to impregnate you with a dimension, you waste it casually. In the equation of the divine, you have become a swine. Because he said, do not give precious things to swine. They will trample on it and come back at you. Every time we fail to manage a spiritual thing, what we said in the spirit is that we are swines. Because being a swine is not to be a pig. Being a swine means you mismanage spiritual resources. Pray in tongues. And this time, don't distract yourself. Journey in God. Face God where you are. Some of you may need to go back to the last instruction you received. The last time God told you, go on a 21 days fast and you refuse. You will go back there because that's where you are. You may be in church, but you are not in church. You are actually at the last junction where you met God. Where you met God last is where you are in the spirit. Oh, 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 manifest you have to build up build up in prayer because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire that's where your tongue will be touched and if your tongue is taught it will be purged when you come back you can become a prophet <laughs>